Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Dean Metcalf. He's going to talk about this beautiful old Martin acoustic guitar that was built in the late 1850s. So Gruen Guitars in Nashville, Tennessee, and if you're uh, at all into guitars, you you know Gruen. We get there and we ask somebody, you know, hey, is there any chance we could, uh, you know, meet George and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And sure enough, George Gruen, you know, comes down, you know, gives us a tour. And he says, well, you want to go upstairs and see the rest? Of you? Well, yeah, we want to go upstairs. And, I, and I'd never done that. I look over and uh, it says, you know, this is a, a Martin uh, 2-21. So 2 is the, the body size and 21 and just describes how plain or fancy it is. You know, instead of having a year on it, it said, you know, circa 1850s. Right. So, so if you're a Martin guitar fan, you're like, oh, you'll hear guys talk. I got, a, I got a pre-war Martin, which means pre-World War II, when the building was a little bit different and, and you know more desirable. But I, I've got a pre-war Martin, pre-Civil War, baby. Um, and, and I just, I mean, I was immediately fascinated with it. So late 1850s, which which means, you know, the original C.F. Martin worked on this. You know, he he either did some final inspection or did some of the some of the work on it. He didn't build it by himself, certainly, but he he had an eye on this thing. It looks like a toy. I mean, compared to modern size guitars, but this thing, it it is light as a feather. It feels like nothing and um small and all that and then i picked it up and and it it doesn't it won't do it justice if you're not seeing this in person but um it <laughs> so right now it's got really old strings on it um I didn't have time to, to switch them, but it, when you have new bright strings on it, this thing just sings. If you know anything about old guitar building, the guitars from that period, so this is late 1850s, um, at that time, they weren't, there was no such thing really as metal strings that they would put on the, these guitars. It was all gut strings, which later, you know, we use now today nylon strings typically. But they're much, much uh, lighter tension, so they're not pulling as hard on a guitar. So most of those guitars back then were built with an entirely different bracing system. So classical guitars have what they call fan bracing, typically. So the, the tops of them are not structurally able to hold this kind of pressure, this kind of tension pulling up on the top with metal strings. But... Uh, Gruen was saying that this um, is one of the earlier examples of Martin using X bracing. So this X bracing system has two braces going across here that the, the X meets somewhere in here behind the sound hole. And that's a stronger uh, support for the top. So because of that, this uh, bridge is able to support um, metal strings. You, you can use light, light gauge metal strings, modern strings on it, which is really unusual. Everything on this guitar is original. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, the, the, the bracing, all that, the only repairs um, I believe that they did, and it's kind of hard to see in the light right now, but there, are, there were a couple of really small back cracks that they had um, cleated. So they put a little bit, bit of wood in there to keep it from moving any further. Um, and the the other the other interesting stuff to me is that like so there's a little bit of wear from either somebody using a pick or maybe they held their fingers there you know so much that they wore it down and it's really hard to see in this light but for some odd reason there are these little indentions in there where you can see somebody has written letters and what cracks me up they they have kind of they've written the uh uh, it's like from the musical uh, scale from every good boy deserves favor. You know, it's EG. It, it has those notes and F A C E and, and that kind of thing. I don't know how, I don't know if it's some kind of visual reference for somebody or just some kid goofing off. And that's kind of the worst part about having old guitars is just dying to know where this thing has been. Uh, this thing somehow survived, you know, 150 some years and made it. Cause you think, you know, back then, they 
They probably the original person probably paid twenty or twenty five dollars uh, for that for this, which was big money at the time, and it was a big luxury. Um, so how did it survive? Where did it go? You know, did somebody buy it in New York or Pennsylvania? And how did it end up in Gruen's hands? We will never know. Um, but a couple of the features that I'm always fascinated by. So these these pyramid they call them pyramid bridges uh, that little uh, design there uh, that's one of the ways that they date and figure out when when this is from um, just because that that style changed uh, the rosette inlay around there um, and then the uh, the back stripe inlay that you can see in the middle of that those are all design features that. They would use different ones and use fancier ones for the more expensive guitars. Martin was German. He had come in, uh, come over from Germany in 1833. But even later, uh, for a long time, they would still import all of these um, inlay uh, pieces. They would still import them from Germany. These tuners, uh, I was just talking to, to another guitar expert because... Um, uh, having a little bit of an issue with one of the tuners, the the worm gears in there not quite uh, meshing up, and you got to be real careful when you tune it and all that. Uh, and these are Jerome tuners, you know, one of the the companies that that they would use these uh, the little uh, tuning pegs um, are ivory, which yeah, which I'm you know I'm not thrilled about because I I love elephants and I hate uh, that 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 happened, but, um, but they're beautiful. And I, I love the fact that they're original. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, I ha if I had it to do over, I would definitely not, uh, not encourage anyone to use ivory, please. One of the things that I love about it, that because this is kind of one of the lower models, this was not super fancy. So the, the, the fancier models at the time, I can't remember if they had, you know, like a 28 and a, a 40, I'm not sure what, what all they went up to, but a lot of those guitars, if they survived, you know, they're crazy expensive, crazy collectible and valuable, or they're in a museum. This one, because it's more of a, a working man's guitar, you know, it's uh, it's not as crazy valuable, I was able to afford it, because I, I can't afford a museum piece. Like I say, you, you, you can find them in... Different condition, different sizes, but a lot of them don't have that X bracing because it wasn't something commonly done back then. So it's cool, especially if someone plays, you know, nylon string guitar style and stuff. But, you know, for me, that was part of the big appeal was that it actually, you know, can be set up like a modern guitar. Older, you know, Martin guitars have this uh, neck volute that continued for years just as a... Uh, like a cosmetic feature and then most modern guitars now modern uh, modern martin guitars don't have that they'll just have a smooth you know neck right there but i always i always just assumed it was some kind of cosmetic thing but it turns out you know on these old guitars that is a very very precise neck joint where it's uh and i always forget this stuff mortis mortis and tenon uh so it's, you know, there's this chunk going up inside there and a hole inside. So that headstock was made as a separate piece that goes on here. And to me, it's fascinating just trying to imagine, you know, there was no machinery. You know, there wasn't that precision stuff that we're used to now with computer designs and, and all that. These things are all done by hand by individuals. And I, I know I'm sure they had patterns and, you know, things that they were using. But these guys had to fit these so precisely. The spruce tops that they would use, um, and I'm not entirely sure where all that was sourced, but I think that those were, I think they used uh, German and sometimes American spruce tops. Um, but the the more interesting thing is the uh, the rosewood. So you, you you still see rosewood on modern Martin guitars, but uh, it's not Brazilian; it's Indian rosewood uh, from India. <laughs> um, but the, the rosewood from Brazil was, um, that was like the main place that builders got rosewood. Uh, that was just where tons of it came from. And if you know anything about, you know, the, the deforestation 
uh, of Brazil, uh, you know, all that all that wood was just flying out of there. They had tons of it, and it was coming. And they did such a good job getting rid of it that it became a, a big problem. So now that it's they're endangered, and there's a lot of laws to protect that, and uh, even buying uh, Brazilian rosewood guitars and some of the other exotic woods, uh, you're not allowed to ship it internationally. And there are all kinds of rules about that. But back in the old days, in the 1850s, you know, this wasn't called Brazilian rosewood. This was called rosewood because it was just that's what everybody had and used. And, uh, and it's, you know, at this point become kind of a uh, mythical, you know, magical status of, you know, having a rosewood uh, guitar. And, and people do still have legal uh, stashes and supplies of old ro- Brazilian rosewood that they've had or, you know, gotten in some legal way. And it's just crazy expensive. Um, whether it makes that big a difference, you know, you can have guys argue about that all day. But it, one of the cool things about Brazilian rosewood is just it's it's got a dramatic look. And the, this guitar doesn't necessarily show it off as much, but um, some of the Brazilian Rosewood guitars you'll see have this like orangey fiber to them, but then they'll have these darker black streaks in there. Um, so just a really beautiful wood. And then uh, the typical uh, uh, mahogany um, neck, I believe, although it could be cedar, but it's definitely old. It's definitely old wood. Yeah, back then it might have been a little bit old, but now it's like really old. This is a very little known fact about um, guitar people. Um, they have opinions, and a lot of times the opinions that will vary. So, for instance, if you had 10 guitar players, they're going to have 37 opinions, and, uh, and they will happily argue all day long about it and walk away convinced that they are absolutely correct and probably didn't hear a word the other guy said. The good thing is that you and I are right, though. Oh, well, that's the thing. That's why we don't even need to talk about issues or anything, because we know we're right. <laughs> if you'd like to hear more stories about cool old guitars, click this playlist, and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.